How to perform a lumbar puncture. A 45-year-old man presents with 24 hours of fever, altered mental status, and severe headache. On examination, he has limited neck mobility and a petechial rash on his legs. Initial labs show an elevated white blood cell count. Lumbar puncture is indicated to evaluate the patient for meningoencephalitis. A lumbar puncture is a procedure used to collect cerebrospinal fluid. Measuring the opening pressure and analyzing the CSF for white blood cells, red blood cells, protein, immune markers, and glucose aids in diagnosing neurological diseases. Before starting the procedure, obtain informed consent from the patient after explaining the risks and benefits. The provider must gather sterile gloves, local anesthetic, an atraumatic lumbar puncture needle to reduce the risk of post-LP headache, antiseptic solution, sterile drapes, collection tubes, and a manometer. Next step is positioning. The patient adopts the lateral decubitus position, knees to chest and chin down, to increase vertebral space for needle insertion. Another option is a sitting position, with the patient leaning forward from the bed's edge. Then comes site identification. The L3 to L4 or L4 to L5 intervertebral space is commonly used for needle insertion. This is located by identifying the highest points of the iliac crests, which roughly correspond to the L4 spinal level, and then moving one interspace above or below. Next is sterilization and anesthesia. The identified area is sterilized with an antiseptic solution. A local anesthetic is injected first into the subcutaneous layer, then into the deeper tissues down the intended path of the needle. It is important to withdraw after each advancement to ensure you are not in a blood vessel. Next is needle insertion. The needle is inserted with the bevel oriented parallel to the dural fibers through the anesthetized area, advancing slowly towards the subarachnoid space. The provider must navigate the needle through the skin, subcutaneous tissue, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum plavum, epidural space, dura, and finally the arachnoid membrane to reach the CSF in the subarachnoid space. Needle advancement should be slow so you can feel for two pops, with the second pop typically indicating that you have crossed the dura. When you feel the second pop, withdraw the stylet fully to watch for a few seconds to look for CSF return. Then comes CSF collection and measurement. Once CSF flow is established, the opening pressure is measured with the manometer. Then, CSF is collected in sterile tubes for analysis. The amount of CSF removed varies, but is typically between 10 to 20 milliliters. Last is needle withdrawal and aftercare. After CSF collection, place the stylet back in and remove the needle, and the puncture site is clean and bandaged. The patient is advised to lie flat for two hours to reduce the risk of post-LP headache, a potential complication resulting from CSF leakage through the puncture site. Performing an LP on patients with a higher body mass may present additional challenges due to difficulty in palpating anatomical landmarks and the potential increased depth to the subarachnoid space. In such cases, using ultrasound guidance can be particularly helpful. Ultrasound can assist in identifying the optimal site for needle insertion by visualizing the spaces between the lumbar vertebrae, thereby increasing the success rate of the procedure and minimizing discomfort for the patient. As you can see in the ultrasound image, the spinous processes, ligamentum flammum, and posterior longitudinal ligament can be easily visualized, with each star indicating a potential path the needle can take between spinous processes. For more information on lumbar punctures, including a guide on how to interpret results, please see the course resources. For more information on this and other neurological conditions, please visit aan.com neurobytes.